produced in Athens at the Ohio University Telecommunications Center. This program was made possible by grants from the George Gund Foundation with the assistance of the Ohio American Revolution Bicentennial Advisory Commission, the Ohio Educational Television Network Commission, the Central Educational Network, and the Ohio Arts Council. sitting here on the green one day and playing the auto harp, which I've been playing for about, oh, ten years, and a member of the Appalachian Green Parks Project came by and asked me to come up and rehearse with them. He said that they were into the history and background of both southeastern Ohio and Appalachia, and this is the kind of music that, I, of course, I was reared with. And so I went over and we began to work on songs that were totally familiar to me and some of the background research that was done uh, applied directly along those lines. You know, my mom and dad play too. Uh, they play country music, and they don't play uh, like this modern, modern country. They play. They like to play the old stuff, and uh, oh, they're they're good. <laughs> I enjoy playing with them. Uh, my uh, grandfather played banjo, and and Uncle Roch, uh, his brother. Charlie knows very well, played banjo too. His Charlie's whole family plays music. We used to get together like every Saturday night down in Kentucky and play music. Cousins and relatives had come from all over to play. Sort of an interesting thing about it was that uh, my great uncle Oscar had a dulcimer and it always hang on the wall there, but he was sick, and so he never played it and no one else knew how. I never really learned how to play it or that much about it until I got into this group last fall and I met Gay. He sort of showed me uh, the ropes. I guess the dulcimer and the banjo are the only two instruments that are really indigenous to uh, the United States. And mine here's got more of your traditional shape that Jim knows and loves so well, as he says. And, uh, well, some people pick them with a feather, but uh, they shed too much for me, so I use a pick and a little colored pencil for a noter here. And it's real easy. I read somewhere where it takes the normal person 10 minutes to learn how to play and the imbecile 15 and oh, it took me about a year I guess. What can I say? <laughs> Every night 
a wish the Lord my pain would come. I wish the Lord my pain would come. I wish the Lord my pain would come and take me back where I come from. I wish the Lord my baby. What we finally ended up with was exactly what we were shooting for. Uh, we're using now, of course, uh, the dulcimers, uh, five-string banjo, guitar, uh, the auto harp. Barefoot and free, pioneer children grew up singing with their families and neighbors. They played singing games in the afternoon sun, and in the evening their mother's lullabies soothed their weary heads. Go Tell Aunt Rhody is an old hill tune that was used in the singing games. This version, a lullaby, we will credit to Jim's grandmother, Mrs. Ruby Smith, who used to sing it to him when he was a little boy. songs. Uh, some of these songs we've discovered in our research. We've done about uh, 25 hours research to every hour on stage, and we've come up with some really fantastic, beautiful, traditional songs. Uh, a lot of them we've discovered are religious in nature because that's the history of this area. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, we were studying the, the great revival of 1800 where the uh, Methodists, the Presbyterians, and the Baptists were involved in some really quite huge camp meetings right in this area down through uh, the lower part of Ohio, uh, West Virginia, and Kentucky. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Charlie, that's your area down yeah. in Kentucky. Well, I haven't really done that much research on it. Uh, do know a lot of the songs, though. Uh, well, part of the reason for that is uh, I wouldn't want to sing my churches behind the times, but when the senior citizens here in Athens got together and gave us an old hymnal. It turned out to be the same one we used in my church down there. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, oh, the thing for research, though, I, I think Leanne's probably done more research on that than any of us. Well, yes, I did a little bit. I read a book on um, 
about a circuit rider named Peter Cartwright who did southern Ohio and Kentucky and the West Virginia area. And uh, the interesting, interesting thing in that, that I found out was that any kind of instruments in the church were very simple. They just didn't want it at all. No. And uh, it's just, it's kind of strange because there are some beautiful old hymns that I can't understand why they wouldn't want the instruments there to help along. <laughs> we really enjoy doing those songs all together like that. But now we'd like to do a couple that sort of grew up with this new land of ours. This time we'd like all your friends to sing along. Or clap your hands, or jump up and down in your seats. Whatever moves your spirits. Don't be shy. May the circle be a rocket by and by. Oh, 
something that pioneers and early Americans had in common with each other was, was work. They um, had to build a new country and they had much to do and naturally this all came out in their songs. Uh, there were songs about building canals and steamboats and the mines. We sing all these in the show and uh, I think one reason they, there were so many of them, they probably helped them make their work go much easier. They sang them while they were doing it. I can remember in grade school, we'd sing a lot of them. They've come down through the years and they've lasted. They're good songs, singing about the ERIE and, uh, oh, the mines. John Henry. John Henry, yeah. And, uh, well, there's a, sh a song in the show that I sing called the ERIE. It's probably one of the more famous canal songs. So. Miles from Albany, forget it, I never shall. What a terrible storm we had one night on the Erie Canal. The Erie Canal, well, the Erie was rising, and the gin was getting low. And I scarcely think we'll get a drink till we get to Buffalo. Till we get to Buffalo, we were chock up full of barley, we were chock up full of rye. And the captain, he looked down at me with his golden wicked eye, his golden wicked eye. Well, the E.R.I.E. was a rising, and the engine was a getting low. And a fierce little thing, we'll get a drink till we get to Buffalo. Till we get to Buffalo. Now the cook was a fine old lady, she wore a raggedy dress. When the wind blew strong, we hitched her up at the signal of distress. A signal of distress. Well, the E.R.I.E. was a rising, and the gym was a getting low. And a fierce little thing, we'll get a drink till we get to Buffalo. Till we get to Buffalo. Police Gazette's crew is all in jail And I'm the only son of a gun that's left to tell the tale That's left to tell the tale Well, the E.R.I.E. was a rising And the gym was a getting low And I scarcely think we'll get a drink Till we get to Buffalo Till we get to Buffalo In conjunction with the canals, uh, there was a lot of industry and farming going on uh, at the time the canals were built. They were built primarily for the transportation of farm produce and industrial commodities such as coal. Uh, a lot of coal was extracted from the hills in both, south, well, in southeastern Ohio, West Virginia, Kentucky, and of course Pennsylvania. Uh, the companies came in during the canal era and later on uh, during the late 20s, early 30s, and extracted coal from this area by surface mining, or strip mining as we call it. This involves merely plowing away the, the surface soil and taking out the coal and it's easily transportable that way. Of course it just terrifies the land and if it's not properly reclaimed then it leaves the, the land in the condition that a lot of the territory around here is seen with uh, coal tipples and, and torn up land. Uh, this is a matter that is difficult to, to deal with because of the fact that if it is properly reclaimed, then there's a legitimate argument for strip mining. But the fact is that it's usually not. Uh, we refer to strip mining and deep mining uh, in one of our segments called the mining segment. When I was a child, my family would travel down to western Kentucky, where my parents were born. Cause a backward old town that is often remembered so many times that my memory's worn. And daddy, won't you take me back to Muhlenberg County, down by the Green River, where paradise lives? Well, I'm sorry, my son, but you're too late in asking Mr. Peabody if Coltrane is holding away. Those men that loaded their families on the flatboats and pushed into the Ohio wilderness 
never dreamed of the wealth of coal lay beneath their new land. They shared all the bounty that this new world had to give. They hunted plentiful game and they farmed the rich bottomlands. They bound themselves together in devotion and hope. Maybe if they'd understood industrialization or maybe if they hadn't been so trusting of a world they really didn't understand, maybe then coal might have made their lives a little easier and more prosperous. But the canal boats went north and the big companies came south. The great bribe for those people that still farm with horses and spun their own cloth. They came with money. $20 a day in store-bought clothes and mail-order catalogs. And Saturday night brought bulging pockets to town, took home cars and washing machines, and 16th birthdays meant a miner's helmet and an early manhood. Sometimes we travel right down the Green River to the abandoned old prison down by Adri Hill. For the air smelled like snakes, and we shoot with our pistols, but empty pop buckles was all we would kill. And Daddy, won't you take me back to New Limburg County, down by the Green River, where paradise lay? Well, I'm sorry, my son, but you're too late in asking Mr. Peabody if coal train is holding away. And for every 250 miners that went down into the mines each year, one didn't come back up. When coal became scarce, idle men became abundant. But without coal, there were no Saturday nights, no dances, no stores, and no homes. There were just washing machines on front porches, and idle men who played marbles with children. Yeah, there were large families too, as a large family was a human comfort then. There were no beds for them to sleep in, and no shoes for the children to wear. There's no returning to that time of innocence, when no one believed such a thing could ever happen. Friends, it hadn't been all that long. There are those among us here who remember it very well. Well, the coal company came with the world's largest shovel. They tortured the timber and stripped all the land. It was fine while it lasted, but it ruined the land. Darling, I just don't have that quarter that you need for school. I'll try to get some laundry to do or something. It's all right, Mama. You know, it won't be like this when your pa gets work again. I know. Oh, here you are. You're getting all grown up and you're having to miss so much. Why, you ought to be out having a good time and, and meeting boys. Mama, it's all right. I'll try to be home early to help you. I worked the mines for 45 years, ever since my pappy took me out of school. I had my bones broken, and I lost an eye in a blast. But the company always took care of me, and my family always had food in their bellies. But now there's no work. And doctor won't sign the papers for compensation. Ain't there a law somewhere that says he has to? Well, they dug for their coal till the land was forsaken Then wrote it off down as the progress of man Things were better before the coal mines came White people used to sell 150 bushels of corn and have enough left over for themselves Oh, there were corn huskins and hoedowns in those days But now, nobody can make a living from the mines and the railroads took up the farm. Last winter, everybody near starved to death. I'm going to quit school this year. I got whooped twice today. It didn't hurt none. That teacher's a no account. My little cousin hit her in the stomach with his fist, and he's only six. He throws stones at windows and everything. He's going to quit next year, too, and we're going to play all the time. I ain't never going to do no work again.
returning to that time of innocence. When no one believes such a thing could ever happen, there are echoes in the hills. Listen, you can still hear them ringing. black men in the north like before the civil war and afterward and like these men like in the united states they had like the laborer it was really important to do what you did right you know either it was like the smallest most meagerest thing you know is that you did it right and you did a good job at it and like we do a song on the show john henry and i think the popularity of the song has lasted so long is because he beats a machine and it just shows you know like no matter what, you know, man can beat out any machine that he builds. When Don Henry was a little baby, sitting on his papa's knee, he gave him a hammer and a little piece of steel and said, Hammer's gonna be the death of me, Lord, Lord. Hammer's gonna be the death of me. Well, the captain said to John Henry, Gonna bring that steam bell round. Gonna bring that steam bell out on the job. Gonna whoop. That steel on down, Lord, Lord, gonna put that steel on down. The Ballad of John Henry tells the story of a steel-driving man who died in a race with a steam drill. 
during the boring of the Big Bend Tunnel in West Virginia. It is said to be more myth than true. Well, John Henry said to the captain, a man ain't nothing but a man. And before I let that steam down, bid me on down. I'll die with a hammer in my hand, Lord, Lord, die with a hammer in my hand. It is true, however, that there was a John Henry, a giant black man who worked as a driller during the boring of the Big Bend Tunnel. Oh, he was a very valuable worker, and the contractor paid him $1.50 a day instead of the usual $1.25. But he did not use a 20-pound hammer because there were no 20-pound hammers in those days. And in reality, he died of old age in Monroe County, West Virginia. Oh, but who cares if the ballad makers used their imagination and had John Henry beat a steam drill through 15 feet of rock? Well, John Henry drove. Fifteen feet, the steam drill only made nine. But it hammer so hard that it broke his poor heart. And he laid down his hammer and died. Lord, Lord, he laid down his hammer and died. Well, they took John Henry to the graveyard and buried him in the sand. And every locomotive that comes on by says, There lies a steel driving man, Lord, Lord, there lies a steel driving man. Probably our most rewarding experiences this summer have come through performing for the mental institutions because they're such a responsive group. I mean, they're just great. You start playing and they just get up there and join in and just start dancing around and joining with each other. And uh, it's just been a lot of fun to see them come out like they do. And uh, the psychiatric wards are kind of a little different situation in that uh, they're a little more inhibited in the responses and hard to reach. But sometimes you can see them coming out at the end of the show, and it's just great to see this change. It's just such warm people, I mean, to, to share themselves with you like that. It's just great. And uh, Robert's got a letter over there that was written to us from a little fellow at the uh, Dayton Psychiatric Center. and. Uh, I think you enjoy hearing it. It's real nice. Should I read it? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. This is a letter from one of the children in the Day Dayton Psychiatric Hospital. Dear musicians and entertainers, this morning I woke up and the sky was blue, the sun was bright, and I had music in my soul humming Amazing Grace. I'm now going to buy myself a guitar and I'm going to learn myself how to play. You are truly entertaining people and I thank you and the children thank you for those enjoyable moments and wonderful music you gave us. It really is nice. I remember the other child that got up and, I don't know, I guess he might have been 14, 13 or 14, and saying, you ain't nothing but a hound dog. It's great. <laughs> the audience loved it. Everybody got into it. And the dancing and the singing and everything that we do together to, to bring the audience in and get them participating carries over in each each place we play. Parks, hospitals, fairs, wherever. And uh, I think it's important. Y'all know what spring peepers are? Yeah, they're these little, little frogs that come out in the springtime. Yeah, you see their little heads sticking up ab above the water there and those little ditches run along beside the roads, their little eyes sticking out. Yeah, they live in field swamps. Yeah, I got this little field swamp runs under my trailer. About a scullion of them live under there. And one morning, or very early in the morning, about three o'clock this spring, they were all going at it full blast. Reep, reep, reep. Keeping me awake. Yeah, I got so nervous, I threw the covers off the bed and ran out the front door and threw the door open and I said, hold it. Do you know they all stopped? 
every one of them. Didn't hesitate for a minute. Just came to a terrifying stop. But in about five minutes, they were going right back at it again. Yeah. Didn't scare them too bad. Scared my neighbors plenty, though. You know, a little later on this summer, about this time of the year, those frogs are getting pretty big. Yeah, the big bullfrogs, these little different tone of voice, they go. Yeah, you know what they're talking about, don't you? <laughs> yeah, sure you do. They're talking about their lady friends. Sure they are. They're talking about courting. That's exactly what this next song's about, a frog that went courting. Froggy been a courting and he did ride, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, Froggy been a courting and he did ride with a sword and with the right by his side, uh-huh, uh-huh. And he rode up to Miss Mussy's door, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yes, he rode up to Miss Mussy's door where he had often been before, uh-huh, uh-huh. And he took Miss Mousey on his knee, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yes, he took Miss Mousey on his knee, said, Miss Mousey, won't you marry me, uh-huh. Well, without my uncle Rat's consent, uh-uh, uh-uh. Well, without my uncle Rat's consent, I wouldn't marry the forever again, uh-huh, uh-huh. Now, Uncle Rat, he rode off the town, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yes, Uncle Rat rode off the town to buy his knees a wedding gown, uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, will the wedding supper be, uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, will the wedding supper be way down yonder by the old oak tree, uh-huh. Bumblebee, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, the first to come in was a bumblebee Bound in the fiddle upon her knee, uh-huh, uh-huh. And the next to come in was a fat sassy lad, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, the next to come in was a fat sassy lad Things them so fast, big as his dad, uh-huh, uh-huh. And the next to come in was an old tomcat, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, the next to come in was an old tomcat She ate the frog and the mouse and the rat, uh-huh. Come in was a slinky old snake, uh huh, uh huh. Yeah, the next to come in was a slinky old snake to chase the whole party into the lake, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Yeah. So I, uh, I blew in his ear. 
Oh, yeah, see, once I had this girlfriend, every time I blew in her ear, she kind of went over oh. oh. Well, anyway, he snorted, and he wheezed, and finally, with a great effort, he rolled away. I ended up over his back and slipping down his dummy. I ended up outside, but without my pants. Yeah, for sure, and I was darned if I was going back in after that. Yeah, do you blame me? No. Okay. Well, I woke up in the morning, federal woman in the 10 o'clock sun. Well, I woke up in the morning, shadow of the sheriff hit me with a shotgun. Better move along, son. She's the mother of the moon. Black-eyed Susan's in her salt and pepper hair. Hitching on the Appalachian Highway. Pull me over one more time and I'm on my way to Ohio. Picked up in the evening, riding all night in the wagon full of hay. Well, I'm picked up in the evening. Keep on going, for tomorrow is another day. biggest surprise we probably had was when we went to Washington the first time last October mm. and we have participation is a pretty big thing within a group we hadn't really expected much there at Lafayette Park uh, we were really surprised the office workers came out and we started to do the square dances and they threw down their briefcases and whipped off their jackets <laughs> just all over the place uh, the uh, <laughs> it's true uh, probably the the best groups of participation, though, are right here in Ohio, in the state parks. Not only do they join in in the square dances and everything, but they sort of got a little group from all over. They followed us around. From park to park, you'd find familiar faces. Hey, you come and go for the back. I think people were are pretty much the same then as they are now. Uh, they had their serious songs, but the, but the ones that they liked best were the were the funny ones, the ones that poked fun at themselves, you know. There was no man 
hope for the hill of being the way he's a living there still singing I did la did la la did la did la day One day the old man went out with the plow The devil flew over his old gray mare singing I did la did la la did la did la day Was neither your son nor your daughter I crave But your old scolding woman I now must have singing I did la did la la did la did la day Well take her on take her on with the joy of my heart Oh by golly you'll never more part singing I did la did la la did la did la day Well, he took her down to the gates of hell, and he gave her a push, saying, you go there, saying, I did la, did la, I did la, did la, day. Well, nine little devils came right in their chain, she up with a club and knocked out the brain, singing, I did la, did la, I did la, did la, day. Well, one little devil went climbing up the wall, saying, take her back, daddy, she'll murder us all, singing, I did la, did la, I did la, did la, day. Well, the old man was looking out through a crack, he saw the old devil a-packing her back, singing, I did la, did la, I did la, did la, day. So the old man ran, hid under the bed, she up with a butter stick and battered his head, singing, I did la, did la, I did la, did la, day. Now this only shows what a woman can do, she can wet by the devil and her old man too, singing, I did la, did la, I did la, did la, day. Throughout the history of Ohio, from time to time, men have been called off to war. And they've gone from this state, uh, understanding that they would be involved in that sort of conflict, not particularly caring for it, but uh, most of them had one thing in common. Wherever they were, whatever kind of soldiers they were, they were always lonely. And this is a song primarily about the Civil War, a soldier who is in a field. Time hangs heavy on the empty hills of winter And walks beside the rolling river down It seems so strange, yet I know somehow I Maybe I was dripping in my mind Sweet Ohio gal, I miss you so Outside the evening is waiting in the river For the warmth of the 
memory that it binds. Sweet Ohio gal, I miss you so. And Lord, it hurts to be alone. Sweet Ohio, why are you calling me? Make me a highway to my home. children and their families used to gather together at the end of a long day and sing a love song to their home in the hills. We would like to end this gathering by singing that song for you right now.
This program was produced in Athens at the Ohio University Telecommunication Center and was made possible by grants from the George Gund Foundation with the assistance of the Ohio American Revolution Bicentennial Advisory Commission, the Ohio Educational Television Network Commission, the Central Educational Network, and the Ohio Arts Council.